So the first thing I want to say is that depending on how you look at it, art frustration, creative block, whatever you want to call it, it can be a good sign and it can be a bad sign. Certain types of art block where you think that your art looks terrible and stuff like that, that's like a growing process of animation. It shows that you're growing. It means you're improving and you're coming up against your barriers. Your standards are becoming higher than they once were. And it's a case of, uh, as Saikura put it, your eye and your hand, your eye is overtaking your hand in its ability. So you can draw a limited way but your eyes can is more advanced and can see the flaws in what you're drawing and the opposite of that is when you you know your hand is overtaking your eye your eye is like oh well this looks great you know when um you know when a, a good artist a competent artist is drawing in front of people and the people are, are like spellbound by it and they're like this artist is godly i f say the same things when i look at their drawings and it's because you know their eye isn't trained to see any kind of flaws in it or anything or how it could be better but the artist has trained his eye so the artist is like no man it's not even that good because the artist has a trained eye and can see all the flaws that is going on in his work it depends you know frustration can be a good sign it can also be a bad sign though maybe it shows that you're out of practice so if you're not practicing enough a lot of the time this is when animators get art block or artists get art block maybe you've been out of it for a week or so that's quite a long time actually to not do a drawing for a week or two weeks you should be drawing every day you know especially if you're doing it as a profession if you're doing it as a hobby fair enough the rules don't apply to you uh, you can come in and out of the subject whenever you like you could pick it up three years later and that's fine because no one's holding you to any standard if you're a professional you're being held to a professional standard which is like ridiculously high in any kind of art industry it could show that you're not as in practice as you once were and you just need to train yourself back up to that level the other idea that I've had like from a personal experience the more I uh, practice the less frustrated I get and I think that's because of this uh, process where you know, if you're out of practice or you haven't practiced enough in a certain field, what you're looking for a lot of the time is the results. For me, that's digital painting. I find digital painting very hard and I often come up against creative block and art frustration. Um, and that's because I want the results, but I haven't put in the work yet to get those results. And that work includes, you know, just wrestling with the painting and and going through the necessary steps, you know, taking shortcuts, shouldn't take shortcuts with painting, and not learning the principles, not actually, like, I've, I've learned the principles, but I haven't learned the principles, like, learning the principles means you can, you can do them on command, someone says, do that now, you can do it, so I haven't really gone through the process, but I want the results, uh, and so I'm frustrated, because I can't get there, when you have experience and you've just drawn over and over again certain things, I don't get frustrated in that way for certain things that I've put a lot of time into. The exception to that is sometimes um, sometimes you will hit these lucky days and they will kind of mislead you. So sometimes you'll have a good day and somehow you're just drawing really well. <laughs> you, you'll be drawing something and you'll just get it lucky. You'll draw the line just right and then you'll fool yourself into thinking, yeah, I'm really good at this, you know. And then the next day you'll hit a bad day and you won't be able to. And so it's kind of up and down. And this uh, makes an artist very uh, insecure because they don't actually know what their standard is. They, they're unsure. And what if they turn up to a job on their first day and they're having a bad day and they can't draw anything and they can't paint and it all looks terrible? Um, that is really scary. It is a really scary thing because everyone expects something of you, but you can't. So, you know, that's natural, but you just have to say, rain or shine, I'm going to turn up today, I'm going to draw. If it's bad, that doesn't matter. If it's good, it doesn't matter. The, the important thing is that I turned up and I drew and I did it or I painted or I created something. That's like the kind of professional mindset that you need to bring to art. And it's something you've got to train, you know, you've got to train yourself to not be too 
um, possessive of the outcome. Uh, not be too dependent on the outcome. You know, you've got to be dependent on the process. You've got to make sure you just follow the process. Okay, so here's here's how you can help yourself to uh, get better at this. One of the things is don't polish something that has something fundamentally wrong at the early stages. So work really hard on the rough sketches and stuff. This is what I've I've experienced. You know, um, your speed painting. Do three speed paints of 30 minutes each before you decide I'm going to render one of them because then you can render the best one you know don't uh, draw a really silly sketch that isn't your best work but then render it out fully so that uh, you know it's got light and shadow and and it's got the highlights and everything you'll be wasting your time because you'll be looking at it and you'll be getting frustrated because no amount of uh, rendering is going to be able to help that animation because it's got something back at the start that you should have done first. Uh, this sometimes means, you know, if something's not working out, you just got to kind of put it to one side, draw it again from scratch. I have this a lot of the time. I'm trying to, I'm struggling with the pose. It's not working. And I have this threshold. I'm like, if I spend 10 minutes on this and it's still not looking like there's any uh, potential in it, I won't delete it because deleting is scary. I take it away from where I can see it and I say all right let's just do it again but from a slightly different approach let's put a different angle on it or something and then that often does it it kind of shifts it if you can see it as like getting stuck you know how like a, a car gets stuck in the desert because of all the sand and everything and it's turning its wheels and it's just it's not able to move you know and uh, some people will say right well what you got to do is you've got to just get on that throttle and drive it as, as fast as you can to get out of there but actually what happens is it just digs itself deeper when that happens uh, uh, what you need to do is you need a fresh approach you need to say okay let's um, let's get out the, um, the winch and uh, let's try and tug it or something like that or let's try and put tracks in under the tires so that it can go up a solid surface. I'm getting too into this. Work with iterations as well, if you can. So iterations are like different versions of the thing. So work with multiple versions. And then uh, if one of them doesn't work, you can quickly go off of that and go onto a different version. In my storyboarding phase, I don't invest everything on one storyboard. I will do different variations and then I'll pick out the best one. Um, similarly with um, fight moves, you know, I'm, I've been doing a fight scene recently, I've been animating it, and, um, you know, I'm often doing variations, and I'm choosing which variations, and then I'm doing, I'm working with that, and uh, that way you get to see the different options ahead of you, and then you can pick the best one, and you'll tend to pick a good one. In a more general sense, I've uh, been reading Stephen Pressfield books, which are, I'll try and link um, down below. Uh, they're really good for just encouragement and how you should tackle art. You know, there's a certain way that a professional artist looks at things which is very mentally sound and strong and stable and you need that if you're going to be a professional. And it is, you put in the work and if you do the work, that's all that you need and then kind of distance yourself of uh, whether it was good or bad enough. Uh, it requires some training, but it's it's well worth it. You need to just push it to one side, especially while you're actually creating the thing. Anyway, I've talked for enough. I hope this video has been helpful. Please check the links down below in the description for the other ways that you can uh, be a part of this uh, channel. And yeah, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. <laughs>